Welcome folks, Mac T back and I have a battle royale. We all know that we have the uh, two synthetic oils and this is not a term used loosely. We have the red line and we also have the AMS oil signature 5W20, both of them. And uh, as I've done in previous videos, they are a synthetic. They're a mix between a PAO and an ester. And we're going to go ahead, I did some testing. Uh, I will put a note of caution in this uh, that the uh, red line is uh, fresh off the batch, six months old, and the AMS oil I found at Farm and Fleet has been sitting on the shelf since 2015 or something like that. So, rather old oil. But hey, if that's what they're going to do is let it sit on the shelf, then we're going to test it. So, Anyway, we're going to go ahead and test these uh, two oils against each other. And what we did is uh, I went out and I spent my own money. This is not a sponsored thing, by the way. This is out of my own pocket. So if you guys want to help support me on that, that would be grateful. But uh, either way, I did the testing on it through Blackstone Labs. I got the oil report back. And these are the results. And we're going to start out first with the uh, virgin testing of the 5W20 of the red line. And uh, basically, as you can see that, we went through that and, uh, you know, I bought it. Well, where did I buy it? Amazon. Without tax, came out to ten forty two. So if you had the tax on it, that, would, of course, would add up to the price. Uh, you might be able to get this at other stores, uh, Summit, Jags, whatever. You know, maybe a local parts store would be selling it. Don't know. But anyway, the testing came out and... Uh, the red line is, of course, got a lot of Molly B, uh, phosphorus, and zinc in it for anti-wear additives. And that will be a key point at the end of this video. Uh, boron, calcium, and primary detergent dispersants and everything else. Silicon's in it uh, for anti-foaming and such. Uh, basically, uh, they said it was a uh, serviceable oil in the correct range. So we're going to say yay to that and uh, move on. Then we have the uh, AMS oil signature. It is at a 5W20. And, uh, you know, what can we say? You got to buy that stuff at uh, Blaine's Farm and Fleet is where I did the retail purchase. The only setback on the AMS oil is the fact that, it, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it, it's, it's a bit difficult to buy uh, in the way they have their retail set up. It's almost like a pyramid scheme in my own mind when I think about it. But uh, you have to pay for a membership in order to buy it at a reduced price. And then once you pay for this membership, you have to renew it every year, which adds on to the cost of the oil. So if you're only going to buy it once a year, you say they use it for you know one year of oil. I don't know if I'd do that. But uh, it costs $10.79 without tax at Blades Farm and Fleet. So anyway, you know we went ahead and did that. But you know keep in mind, if you want to buy it, direct from them then you got to buy a certain quantity to get free shipping it, it just they, it can end up being a pricey oil if you don't watch what you're doing uh, one thing that is another good oil sample from uh, Blackstone as far as they're saying it's got all the typical additives calcium phosphorus zinc molly B and everything else but they did note that it does have an 11.2 TBN to it and I'll try to explain that later uh, whereas the red line usually comes in in the 9-ish category as far as a TBN. But it's all about the additives, folks. It's always about the additives. Anyway, starting out, we did the test. We got the testing back. Got the dates and everything that I did the testing here for everybody to see. And we start out with the aluminum with the red line having one part per million aluminum with the universal average being zero. AMS oil signature had none in it. Chromium, both oils were at a zero for that with the universal average being the same for both. Uh, iron, iron content, both of them had one part per million iron with the universal average saying, yeah, that's right. Uh, copper, zero copper for the, them across the board with the universal average having zero copper. Lead was zero across the board for everything, including universal averages for both oils. Tin, zero across the board also for tin for both the oils and the universal average. Now we got the molybdenum. Molybdenum, molly B as we're going to call it. The red line comes in at a whopping 587 parts per million of the molly B, where the AMS oil only clocks in at 154. I just did a testing on another oil that is 
far cheaper that had the same amount of Molly B in it as this high priced AMS oil. So keep in mind, they're skipping on that part of it. Nickel, there is no nickel in the oils. And of course, universal averages have no nickel in them. Manganese, zero manganese additive with universal averages being zero pretty much also silver of course zero zero across the board including universal averages titanium they have not added titanium titanium is an upper comer for some additives on oils but both of these oils choose not to add any titanium to their oil so zero with the universal average being about three parts per million Potassium. Redline adds four parts per million potassium to their oil, whereas AMS Oil Signature puts absolutely none. Universal average is one part per million. Boron. Okay, Redline puts in 122 parts per million boron, whereas the AMS Oil puts in about double 230 parts per million. But the universal average on all virgin samples that are tested are 89 parts per million. So uh, they're both higher than the universal average. Silicon. Silicon is added as an anti-foaming and AMS oil uh, put in, uh, what was it, three parts per million, whereas Redline added 17 parts per million, with the universal average being three parts per million. Sodium. Sodium is a thing that they play with, and they also add to the oil, and Redline added 18 parts per million in it with AMS oil signature having four parts per million and universal averages being 58 parts per million. So both of them are below par on that as far as universal usage. Calcium, this is always a big one. Calcium is a big additive for a lot of oils. And we have the red line clocking in at 2,737 parts per million with the AMS oil having 3,356 parts per million the universal average is generally 1,896 parts per million for calcium. So we're going to give the big win to the AMSOIL signature for calcium additive. Magnesium. Red line pulls in at 5. And then, of course, the uh, AMSOIL signature runs 14 parts per million. Universal averages are far higher at 88 parts per million. Phosphorus. Phosphorus is another gigantic additive that folks use a lot of. And Redline is definitely going to up the ante on that by adding 1,076 parts per million of the phosphorus with the AMS oil just doing 737 parts per million. The universal average is 657 for the phosphorus additive across the board universally. Is zinc. Zinc is another big additive a lot of companies use. And zinc has some issues with it in that uh, it can uh, cause catalytic converter problems. But in this case, Redline is up in it too. 1,121 parts per million zinc. Great additive as far as anti wear. And then AMS oil brings it down to 761 parts per million for their zinc additive universally the additive count is 771 so uh ams oil definitely dropped it below par universally for uh, the fine quality oil they're trying to say it is uh barium barium is zero across the board for all oils with universal averages being zero now we get the sus viscosity at 210 degrees fahrenheit and we see here the uh, red line is running at a 54.6 with the ams oil being a 54.1 a virtual tie in both trying to run basically dead in the middle as far as their uh, viscosity at 210 degrees fahrenheit the c ST viscosity at 100 degrees Celsius comes in at an 8.65 for the red line with an 8.50 for the AMS oil signature. So they're pretty much neck and neck on that one also and dead set in the middle as far as universal averages. Flashpoints, definitely a different flashpoint, and I think we can contribute this to some of the way the ester and the PAO blends are, but the uh, red line comes in at 475 de uh, degrees for a uh, flashpoint with the AMS oil coming in at 425. So uh, we, you know, I'd be interested to see what a used oil sample would come up as far as flashpoints over usage. But 400, anything over 400 is a good to go as far as uh, testing goes. Fuels, there's no fuel in the oils because they're virgin samples. Antifreeze, there's nothing in there. Virgin samples, again, there's no water found in these 
you know, as far as we're concerned, that's a great deal. And insolubles, we're all at zero. The uh, TBN, total base number of the testing, I did not test the red line, so I took it off of the uh, Petroleum Oil Institute uh, website, and they had tested the uh, red line before, and it came in at a 9.0, which under my research is pretty standard for what red line usually you know, you know, claims as far as their uh, TBN goes. But my testing with Blackstone for the uh, AMS oil was pretty much on their claims also. It came in at 11.2, which is a very high number. Generally, a lot of oils I test were coming in around 6 to 7. So uh, with this being 11.2, uh, that is quite high for something. And, you know, results will be said. Uh, what is the TBN degrading going to happen as the oil is used? How much does it drop every 10 hours of use? And I do testing on use samples generally to determine that, but I don't have any use samples for the uh, AMS oil synthetic to see what its drop is, nor do I have a drop for the red line. So that is a future video to be coming. Uh, essentially what we got for our additional information, you can find this all on MacTGarage.com, my website where I have this documentation posted for the results of this testing along with other testing and ratings for the oils. But here is what we got. AMS oil si signature, the synthetic oil they are, they have a higher price than Redline and requires a membership fee as far as I told you. Uh, it's not a total ester nor is it a total PAO oil, but, they're, but the AMS oil is a blend of both. So. Don't be thinking, it's oh, it's all ester. Well, all ester is not good, and all PAO is not good, and there's scientific reasons behind that. Uh, the date of the sample that I uh, collected from this bottle, the sample date on the bottle was 30 September 2015. Yes, I bought this recently, as a month ago. Uh, here's January. I bought it not two months ago and did the testing on it or so on the date you saw. And this is how old this oil was sitting on the shelf. Uh, I'm sure their, you know, what do you say, their their formulations have probably changed over that period of time too. So uh, there's no telling what it is now, but this is the what happened with this bottle. Uh, whatever you do, follow the owner's manual on your frequency of your in your driving conditions to decide when you're going to change your oil. I test all my oil so I know how long I can run my oil, and I go by hours because miles are inaccurate. Now, as far as the red line, it has a lower price than the AMS oil retail and does not require a membership to buy. You can buy this freely on the internet, Amazon, everywhere you want to buy it. Uh, and again, it is not a total ester and it is not a total PAO. It is a blended oil. And I got this direct from Redline when I called them in their helpline, which I will tell you, AMS oil was not so forthcoming uh, in their information. Uh, the date of the sample is within six months, you know, like I said earlier in the video. And then again, follow your owner's manual for frequency of use and changing your oil so that you don't do it. And like I said, always change my oil and test it. Now, if we want to know who's the best oil, well, they're both good oils. I'm going to say that, but one's better than the other, in my opinion, when you take and add the numbers up. Anti-wear parts per million total number was 1,652 for the AMS oil, whereas the anti-wear for the red line was 2,784. Anti-wear is the stuff they put in your oil to keep your engine from wearing out. Definitely about half of what uh, is being put in a red line. Now the detergents, here's where we get the money. Uh, the detergent level in the AMS oil signature was 3,600 parts per million with the detergent level being 2,864 in the red line. So we got to give the win to uh, AMS oil for having the most detergent but less anti-wear. Now the total combined numbers of the detergent and anti-wear is where we determine our winner. Best two out of three, right? Well, here it goes. The total combined numbers for the AMS oil signature for both the anti-wear and detergent was 5,252 parts per million, whereas you go to the red line and you get 5,645 parts per million. So, ding, winner is red line. Total base count of all the uh, anti-wear and, and uh, detergents, and we got the higher amount of additives that go in line with that for the red line. So. Uh, you can look at it all you want, see what you got. I got the data right here. It does not uh, 
bear to say that uh, I'm giving an opinion. I'm giving you the data. You can make your decision on this oil little roundup here that I got going on. But here are the facts and data right in front of you so you can make your decision and decide which oil is the better oil you may decide you want to use in your vehicle. And sometimes convenience is the problem with the AMS oil, whereas the red line, you can order it, get free shipping through Amazon. Hey, you're all set. Uh, so either way, choose your oil wisely and make sure that you do, do that, uh, decide what you want to do. But that being said, this is Mac T, and this is my uh, oil testing segments as I always do and I want you to of course make sure you like and subscribe to this channel and also make sure you join up on the Facebook groups Mac T Ford Edge on Facebook and also Mac T Garage on Facebook all these uh, samples that I test will be in MacTGarage.com website which is your Ford Edge go-to information location if you have questions on nearly anything about your Ford Edge you go to the website and you'll find vast amounts of information on there and in conjunction with my Facebook groups you will definitely find that everything is easy and within reach for your help and also your desires for buy parts and anything else so that being said uh, make sure whatever you do that uh, you watch the videos hit the like button all that good stuff we got uh, all sorts of other things going on with our videos so make sure that you uh, make check out Mac T garage on uh, YouTube because I have other videos on there also but that being said, my fee at the floor today, I'm having a great day. Band of One has some great music that you're going to listen to. And Mercy Girl's got a couple one-liners for you. And that is it, folks. Have a great day. In front, you heathens. Start shoveling. Now, move it. Hey. Keep shoveling. Keep shoveling and you will get no gruel for dinner tonight. Oh, you only get air sandwiches. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos and remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Go production. <laughs>